Hi. Um, this is my first attempt at building a server. I've built many workstations in the past and home computers, but on this particular occasion, um, I've decided to have a go at doing my own server. The reason for that is pretty straightforward. Um, the cost of buying a server or getting somebody to build one on my behalf is, in my opinion, um, excessive. It seems that um, there's a whole group of people out there who um, prey on um, people's fears and uncertainties and consequently um, a small business um, really is um, having to pay through the nose um, to get somebody to do this for you. Now this is, I'm not trying to claim that the server I'm going to build is anything like the servers that you can get in these massive data centers run by big multinationals um, and things like that. No, I'm not on about that. I'm on about a normal server that you could put in your back office, uh, which is then running a small business system with, in my case, 10 workstations. Um, and so therefore I've spent a lot of time researching on the internet um, finding out as much information as I can so I can then hopefully put together something that will do the job. One distinct advantage that I have had is looking at the YouTube reviews. I found them um, vital really in being able to assess what my needs are and what will work and what won't. Uh, consequently I just felt that it was appropriate for me to give something back to the YouTube community uh, bearing in mind the hours and hours of video that I've been watching that other people have done and without which I could not have put together um, the server that I'm planning on doing. So I wanted to share uh, with you um, my product selection and uh, the background behind the reasons I selected those products and then um, over the course of the next couple of videos that I put together maybe three just depends how much time it takes you're going to watch me hopefully put this server together um, and get it up and running so with no further ado I'd just like to start off with telling you a little bit about the case I've chosen. Um, I've got it here. It's an enormous case. Um, it's the Corsair 800D. I'm not going to go into any great detail about this because there are fantastic YouTube videos all about the Corsair 800D. But just so you know why I've chosen this over and above any other case uh, on the market, uh, I chose it because I wanted something that looked professional. So many cases um, look like uh, like an alien being, you know, something which a young a young lad in his bedroom would want. Um, you can't have something like that in a workplace. Um, and well, I don't feel you can anyway. And I wanted something which looked like it was there to do a server job. Um, so I've chosen the 800D for that reason. I've also chosen it because I think that this is going to potentially um, be the best case for me going forward. Uh, there's an awful lot that I can do with this in the future as upgrades come along. Um, I like the fact it's got a hot swappable hard drive base, it's got four of them, um, because I am going to introduce a RAID system into my server and consequently um, I feel that the hot swappable would be a, a useful addition to have. Um, it also um, has the advantage of a lot of space in there for airflow. Now I live in uh, Australia and temperatures here in Australia are very high. It's not unusual for it to hit 40 degrees uh, for weeks on end. So consequently, 
um, keeping this whole server cool is a, is a priority and, and also an issue which I have to consider and address. So that's the case that I've chosen. Um, then to go in the case, I next thing we can look at is the power supply. Um, I decided after reviewing the Corsair case that um, I might as well purchase the power supply that works so well with it. An awful lot of the YouTube videos um, seem to marry the two up. And um, when I actually reviewed this particular power supply, along with others, might I add, <clears throat> I found that this one was probably uh, the most suitable one for my needs. I would just point out that getting hold of products here in Australia is not the same as it would be in uh, the UK or in the States. We don't have anything like the choice that you've got. And prices are significantly higher. Uh, this case cost me $100 more than it would have done if I'd been living in the United States or in the United Kingdom. So clearly that's an issue when you're starting to look at these things. You, Yes, I might have paid more for the case than I necessarily wanted to, but when I, I thought, well, if I'm going to buy a case, I want it to be a case that's going to last me a long time. I don't want to end up having to buy another case further on down the line <clears throat> because it costs too much. Um, the power supplies, again, very little choice. It's all down to um, whether manufacturers want to um, offer these products to the Australian market. Um, I think they should, I think there should be far more choice here, but there isn't. But nevertheless, that is the, um, the power supply I chose. It's an HX1000 watt. Um, I like this because it's got a very high um, certified rating of 80. Um, and also, when I'm looking at driving uh, quite a lot of power through this server, um, with such things as fans and other cooling devices. I, I really want to make sure that I've got a reliable power supply that will also work within the temperature ranges that uh, this server is going to have to operate in. So that was a significant factor for me, and I, so I chose that. Um, processors next. I've decided to build it round uh, the Intel Xeon um, system. I'm going to go for a dual processor server. These are Xeon 5600 series. They're actually 5620s. Um, I bought two of them. Um, one thing which did surprise me was um, whenever I bought a processor in the past, a retail version as opposed to an OEM version, they've always come with a stock fan and cooler. Um, these haven't. And I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, I thought I was going to get the stock fan and stock cooler in there. Um, clearly, the Intel Xeons don't actually um, come, or if they do, they don't ship them with that here in, the, here in Australia. Um, so consequently, um, I've had to go out and look at alternatives. And um, bearing in mind the motherboard I've chosen, um, I've been really limited in the amount of space I'm going to have in the motherboard to put a fan and a cooler. Uh, and in the end, um, again, because of temperature issues, I've decided to go for water cooling. And I've looked at a range of water coolers, but I opted in the end for the Antec um, H2O cooler. This, um, I'm hoping, will be absolutely a, an excellent choice. wasn't cheap for me. Um, they were a lot more expensive here than they are in other parts of the world. I had to buy two, obviously, because I've got two processors. Um, these were over $100 each. The processors were $500 each. Um, just to give you an idea of the kind of prices that you have to pay um, to get. So you can see why it was crucial for me to have a go doing this server myself. Um, because otherwise um, I uh, I'd have been paying an arm and a leg. Then finally, uh, the motherboard I went for was um, an Asus Z8NA-D6. Um, I went for this because it's an ATX 
the motherboard. And I needed an ATX in order for it to fit in the case. You can modify these cases because they are big enough to take a full-size server case, a full-size server motherboard, but I, I wanted an ATX one if I could. Um, I'm familiar with ATX motherboards because of all the um, workstations I've built over the years. Um, and the other thing about this motherboard which attracted me was the fact that I can put in it unbuffered non-ECC memory. Now you might say that's not a very good decision if you're going to build a server. Um, but let me just clarify something for you. I'm needing to fill all the slots with memory because when you start to read up on um, these things you find out that it's, 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 it's beneficial to put all the memory slots, have memory in all of them. Um, there are six slots in total in this motherboard. So that means I'm going to find the money for six slots of memory. Um, and you can't seem to get much under about two gigabytes now. Okay? So that means I'm looking at a minimum of um, 12 gig of memory. 12 gigabytes of memory here in Australia, Australia is going to cost me approximately $1,500. Okay. Whereas I can buy 24 gigabytes of um, non-ECC memory. That's twice as much memory for $320. So you can imagine the difference. And, and, and you think, well, why would I want to spend all that money on, a, on, on one item in my, in my, in my server? Um, I know that I'm taking a risk, but I'm hopeful that by getting quality memory, uh, the risk will be minimal. Um, and so consequently, um, this is one of the reasons why I went for this motherboard. Um, so, um, that's that. Next thing I've got is the hard drives. Um, I've bought four hard drives. They're all one terabyte. They're Seagate Barracuda um, 7200 RPMs. So I've got four of those. There we go. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> and then um, just a couple of straightforward DVDs, um, internals. Um, these are all SATA, by the way. Um, there was point of scope for anything else other than SATA these days. Um, so anyway, I've, got, I've actually got two DVDs. And you might say, well, why did I buy two? Basically, it's to, um, when I'm installing the work, the, um, the operating system, and reading all the blurb, it suggests that it's a bad idea to remove the installation disk. Um, <coughs> once you start installing it, I'm going to put Small Business Server 2008 in. And uh, it's sort of saying that once you start installing it, if you ask for drivers, you shouldn't be taking that installation disk out. So they're expecting you to put the drivers either on a USB or or on a uh, on another DVD drive. Well, uh, I decided to go for another DVD drive. Bearing in mind the case is so big, I've got more than enough space to put two DVD drives. In. Um, so that's it. And then finally, finally, um, last but not least a decent book on the operating system that I'm going to install. But this book goes so much further. <coughs> it's given me some excellent advice on uh, product selection, uh, the, the amount of memory, the sort of processors, etc, uh, etc, et that I should be looking at installing. Uh, it also touches on the different types of RAID, um, and it's really the RAID, um, reading that section here was what 
prompted me to go for um, RAID 5, which is what I'm going to be using with the four hard drives. And so that's it, basically. In the next, in the next video, I'm going to start uh, unboxing all this. Uh, and hopefully you'll get a feel for um, what, uh, what it's going to be like to build, build a server. Thank you very much.